Hey guys, it's us. Uh, we're playing the Stanley Parable. We're gonna, Stanley Parable. We're going to start a new game. Yes, we are. Alright. And this is a Half-Life 2 mod off SourceMods.com. No. Mod Database. Mod Database. Well, this is the story of a man named Stanley. Yes. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Very hard this job. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it so ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in though he had been made exactly for this job, and Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Well, what was that? Something that would what? forever change Stanley. Something oh, he would never quite thing. forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. Seconds. No one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting, or even say hi. Very well Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. He did the whip part as he came to his wits and regained his senses, I was say he, must be he got up from his desk Windows 8. and walked yeah. out into the hallway. You hear him? He got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Oh, yeah, those Stanley decided steps. to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Someone just busts out one of the doors. No, it's not scary. When mm -hmm. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What if I just went through the door on the right? Try it. You can do whatever you want. Either listen to another this guy or don't. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Ah. <laughs> and like that, he was back on track. Like it's a whole different story if you go the way he does. If you go the wrong way, it's pretty. Yeah. Is it more fun? Do you think? Stanley entered the it lounge. Depends. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. That's where I thought it was going to be. Alrighty. Nice kitchen utility. Oh yeah. Some stained stainless steel. <laughs> Our break room doesn't look that good. Coming well, uh, to a stand, the budget cut. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Bitch. Ooh, fuck that. I don't work for no boss. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared. There's only one way to go. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue is almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Uh, Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling, until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No, Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. 
I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. That's the fourth wall shit right there. Breaking the fourth wall. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got <laughs> dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. Sounds familiar. The tragedy was not the death of a single person. It was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people yeah, like to meet her, very important yeah. people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. Or, yeah, disobeying him the first time is, ah, I think it's just to me, it's just credits from here. That okay. was the game? Yeah, you got that ending because you, there's so much more, but you got that ending because you went down the stairs. So you have to listen to him? Uh, no, like, don't listen to him the first time, and it's really good. Like, that's what I did the first time, and I think my head exploded. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to try again. We're going to skip it this time. Again. This is no, fuck Stanley. <laughs> Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of this, total uh, solitude was terrifying to him. I, I'm getting deja vu. When boo. Stanley came to yeah. a set of two <laughs> open doors, he entered the door. So this is the, the first one. Yeah, go to the door on the right. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Or just kept going to the elevator. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. You mean down? Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you hit the right one. Careful, careful. E? Oh, no, no, you're good. <laughs> oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere, and I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone? Give me a chance and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Convincing argument. Huh. Let's see. Very creepy holes. Red and blue. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Ah, fuck you. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Perhaps you just understood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. <laughs> Maybe he's colorblind. This is a never ending home. No, no it's a new. It's a I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. 
You want to know so badly what's out there, you want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Oh. Yeah, this is what it looks like when you... You see? It's nothing. Program game. No one's even built this yeah. section of the map because, because you were never supposed to be uh, here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dead wall <laughs> textures. That's it. Is this what you were looking for? Yes. Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? Perfectly. I put a lot of time into that. And now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. I go up to, to the think that that's all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, then you would have been happy. Yes, well, hey, you still need a little something to do, am I right? Here, let me load up another map. See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. Uh -oh. Ah, here's one. Let's oh, boot this up. Game. We'll see if you like it. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't joking. He's in control of your life. Uh, it's a Half-Life map. Do you remember? Yeah. There's a well, Stanley, is this any better? Well, I don't know why it would be. To City this 17. map wasn't even made for you. At least I created a world specifically with you in mind. I wanted to make you a leading man. This one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. Well, we're on our own? Yep. Explore. Mm -mm. A nice dark hallway. Yeah. There's nothing scary. Oh. Don't worry. Or is there? Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds me of Gladys when he gets all pissy. He's addicted to drugs and hookers. Hey, it's Stanley. Where? Uh, on the screen, working on his little computer. You don't see the screen? Right there. Oh. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, go right. Just like you usually would for the story, if you remember. Where's Barn Barn? Yeah. Now, about that beer I owe ya. Hold up, Passport. I spent so long talking about <laughs> you. Why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Alright, what do you want to talk see. about? Well, According to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. I'm gonna go for a this chip is break. Fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Oh no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? Yes. Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. Nope. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? Not at all. God, that slam. Just the end of the line. I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience for you, considering not a single art aspect in this map was created with you in mind. But hey, you're a creative kid. I bet you can come up with a story about this place and why you're in it. And while you're doing that, why don't you think up an ending too? Because you certainly you won't see the way you had to go. I'm afraid that's the long and short of it. <laughs> this room and these walls are all you get. Wait. Hold on. What do you? What are you doing? Look around. I swear there's like light. Or just walk. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this game. There's a car just coming at me. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. You up yet? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh my. Oh my mm. god. Is he a DJ? With <laughs> no. Well, you keep walking. But now he's not here. What? He couldn't follow you. Ah. Uh. So maybe I should go the other direction now. Yeah, go for it. Nothing's gonna pop out from around the corner. You have to say that like that and just yeah make me think about it. Uh, 
boss's office. It's sad, I know, but all stories must come to an end. Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. You got the girl. I know it can be a little hard you getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. He's still here. Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. <laughs> and for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. Dun, dun, dun. But only for now. You want to try one more just doing what he says? Sure, we'll do one more. Uno mas, people. Uno mas. Oh god, that's loud. Yeah. We should be able to lower that in our video editing software of sophistication. So. That may or may not yet exist. Yeah. Alright. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge. Yes, to he check did. On his co Mm -hmm. He never functioned well by himself, no. and constantly needed support and guidance from others. He was a pain. So he was a pain. Solitude was terrifying to him. Fucking terrifying. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. His left, my right. Do you not see my my uh, friend Vince here? He's inside of the computer. That's why it's his room. Stanley oh, entered yeah. the lounge. He was horrified. I'm not a single person. Person in this part. He decided he would walk okay. out to see his boss, Please, no, no, hoping like that he would find an make some food, food, wash my hands. Take a look at the drawings. I think that's a teleport blueprint from Kleiner's lab. Kind of looked like it. Yeah. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's wait, office. Wait, can you wait, wait, go left a little more? Okay, I thought I saw. Yeah, up. the way it was blurred, I thought it was like more up. Yeah. The, the first time that I saw that. That's why I kind of went into the corner a little bit. I might want to take that. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned this was to discover really not stunned. an indication of any human life. It was at this point no that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner oh. of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. Ooh. And so he had assigned the keypad, a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, <laughs> five, seven. <laughs> but of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Oh, Stanley ventured forth into the newly as he drew deeper into the bowels of the building. Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged he into a perfectly. long room to find mm -hmm. Rose. Screens with a number above it. What was he, 427? Stanley noticed, yeah, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, yeah, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. These are some fancy vending machines over there. What? An enormous no vending machine. Panel no, those are vending machines. But <laughs> not one yeah, they are. Look, they're vending machines. Buttons I think they're chips, salsa. <laughs> salsa. <laughs> and it's so up to it has salsa in the vending machine. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Oh, God. And the reality began to sink in. 
Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? Probably. That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? There is he a began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. No. Yeah. If I climbed up that one, it'd be like, not listening. No, they're just, I think they'll do up there. You get to make another little choice at the top here. I'll let you make a choice. Make it a choice. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from his sleep. One turns off the generator, the other turns it back on. I know, but what are the choices? Uh, that one shuts it down, the other one puts you in control. <laughs> Hold it down, yeah. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? No. After it kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself? Is that what you wanted? Control? Bit. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <Yeah. laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But, but you, you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. So would it end I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead. Play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom and escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times, and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever and then dying alone. But if I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Now oh, I'm enjoying it. Tell you, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. There we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing, Nero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. Yeah. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, <laughs> trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. All them turn it's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. 
to the tragedy. Negative it's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. 30 seconds, Stan. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, would it? Instead, you'll perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone. I turned it off. Because I'm not going anywhere. It was there a chance I could have I'll be here to watch every off. second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's a dark ending. What were you saying though? I was gonna I was saying if I climbed back up could I have turned it off? No. 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 Well uh, Yeah, you just die. Yeah. <laughs> it's happily ever <laughs> Yeah. Damn. But uh if you would have actually turned it off like the door behind you opens and you walk out into sunlight. I think it's all it's still fake though. Like uh, something depressing yeah. still happens. There's really no happy ending to this game. No. <laughs> So if you feel like going out and being depressed, uh, the Stanley Parable is the game for you. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.